Hey boys and girls, so I told you I was going to bring you some cool builds. Today's that day. Let's go check out the first one. What's happening boys and girls? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to head up to Denton, Texas. Denton is a little college town just north of Fort Worth and I've got a really cool car to show you today. You're going to enjoy this one. Let's head up there and check this thing out. Oh, hey, what's up, YouTube world? Welcome to ATS Racing. <laughs> This is a 1988 Ferrari Mondial Coupe. We actually recently found out they only brought 35 to the US that year. So it's actually a pretty rare car. Um, so it's the 3.2 uh, 32 valve V8. It's the same motor as a Ferrari 328. We designed a single turbo kit for it that's very similar to my blue 308 that was on uh, the smoking tire last year or two years ago. Uh, the main difference is we did a water air intercooler actually in the engine bay uh, you can see the plumbing for that. And so the trunk for the car remains entirely intact. So you can still make, you know, weekend getaway trips on this car, or drive cross country on the car. This car is set up with a full flex fuel setup where we can run ethanol E85 or pump gas, 93 premium pump gas. And there's a sensor on the firewall there that actually detects the ethanol content of the fuel. And then the link G4 ECU in the trunk um, uses that information to adjust the timing, the fuel, and the boost control settings based on ethanol content and what we tuned as a, a safe level of power for this car. So on pump gas, this car makes about 410 at the wheels, which based on typical Ferrari drivetrain losses is right at 500 at the flywheel. And on E85, it makes 550 at the wheels. Uh, again, with drivetrain losses, that puts us a little over 650, probably 670, maybe even 675. The car is uh, very, very drivable. Uh, we actually use a lot of Toyota parts because our, our uh, original business here at ATS was working on Toyota MR2s. And so uh, we actually use Toyota Tundra coils as they fit the cylinder heads and Ferrari valve covers very well for coil on plug adapting. We use a Toyota Tundra throttle body and a Maserati gas pedal. Uh, and this car is actually converted to throttle by wire. Uh, the motor was actually built by Norwood Italia as a normally aspirated engine um, sometime in the, the mid 2000s for the previous owner. And they went through the cylinder heads. It's got ported heads. Uh, it's got an upgraded intake cam and bigger intake valves. Uh, the rest of the motor is basically a stock 328, except for some JE 10 to 1 compression ratio forged pistons. We went in while we had the, the, uh, the while the car was down building the turbo kit. We went ahead and pulled the timing covers and uh, replaced the timing belts, so the service is fresh on that. Uh, the AC blows cold. We, we, uh, it has the upgraded compressor already. These cars actually came factory with it.
UPS in and out area each day. International shipping. We do a lot of international shipping. We've sent motors to literally almost, I think every continent on earth, short of Antarctica. Uh, this is kind of our machining area. We've got a, a mill and a lathe, um, a variety of saws, depending on what kind of material and what kind of cut you need to make. Uh, in fact, those are two almost identical saws that are equipped with two different blades based on what you need to cut. Um, this is our fab area, and most of what we do is still Toyota MR2 stuff. And so this is actually a second gen MR2 motor. This is, I realized recently, I saw the VIN tag. This is the original, original block out of my green MR2. Oh, yeah. Um, I didn't know I even still had it. So this is a Gen 2 motor we use for fabbing up downpipes, turbo kits and such for Gen 2 projects. This is a Gen 3 motor, which serves as our mock-up for Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5 engines. Uh, Scott's been welding on a downpipe today. You might see all the aluminum foil sitting on the welding table. If you don't know what that is for, uh, you use it to plug your pipes to hold your shielding gas inside so you get a much better weld on the backside. If you're a fan of the smoking tire, you'll recognize this car it was featured out at Eagles Canyon uh, Raceway. So this car, uh, the day we were out on the smoking tar, we were, we were making about 560 at the wheel, so just about the same power as the, uh, as the Mondial. And shortly after that video, we actually turned it up another 60 horsepower, uh, which it did great. Uh, we made 622 at the wheels. We, uh, we started to develop a, a smoking problem a little later. It wasn't actually related to the boost. It was just a wear issue, and the, the valve guides in the heads had never been changed. So when we went into the motor, uh, we found several issues. I mean, like I mentioned in the smoking tire video, this motor was designed to go to Bonneville and last about 12 miles. And I drove it on the street for three years and put, I'd say 10,000 miles on it. So we decided it was a time to tear it down and, and do more of a, you know, a once in a lifetime rebuild on it. So we sent the sleeves out, had them bored a half millimeter over, had Weisco make us a new set of pistons, sent the heads out to our head guy and had uh, all new valve guides put in. This car was originally uh, a normal throttle cable, but I like the results on the Mondial so much with the throttle by wire that we're converting this car to throttle by wire. Uh, we're adding a speed sensor, so hopefully we can implement some sort of traction control. Because uh, at 620, the car does get a little, a little scary, even on the big Toyo R888 uh, road race tire here. This is Robert Doe's butt. Um, he's in the, what we uh, affectionately call the lotus position. I'm about to blow that, uh, blur it is, out. Uh, I don't know which is your typical uh, like yoga pose that you have to do to work on a lotus esprit, uh, which is something <laughs> we, we actually do a lot here. And it's funny, we, we didn't really sh set out to be a lotus esprit shop, but I bought one about maybe three years ago. And I put it on the forums and, the, and Facebook group you know, what I was doing with my Esprit. And the next thing you know, owners are contacting me saying, hey, my Esprit doesn't run, or my Esprit needs this, would you be willing to work on it? And so we've had, this Esprit is actually from, from Mississippi, and we've had cars brought in from Austin, Midland, Mississippi, um, Houston, for us to resurrect. Um, this car originally made about 275 horsepower, and I believe the last time it was on the dyno with our turbo upgrade, we were at 410 horsepower. And that's not the original color, right? That is not the original color to this car, but that is an original Lotus color, but it was only on the V8 cars. This is a four cylinder car, which I think are dramatically more reliable than the V8 cars. And as far as prices go, the four cylinder is an amazing, an amazing buy as far as an exotic car goes. Is that That's the, the transmission out of my 308. Yeah. Um, it's the oil pan is part of the transmission. The transmission is the oil pan, exactly. right? Exactly. The transmission in, in what you're photographing there is actually complete. That's the complete transmission. And this open hole here is actually the oil sump for the 308 motor. So it actually bolts down on top of the transmission. And then once the motor's in place, you've got a set of what they call drop gears that you've got a clutch here, and then you've got three drop gears that drop down to this input shaft on the transmission. And That's pretty cool. What normally breaks on these trannies is this ring, this uh, ring gear cover 
actually snaps off and it ex basically explodes out of the car when you do a, an excessive drag launch. So that's why my 308 doesn't have drag radials on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is our Dynojet 248 Dyno. Uh, it's a two wheel drive Dyno, uh, above ground unit. So we've got the four post lift. So you actually back the car on the lift then raise it up to the level of the dyno and then back it halfway off the lift onto the dyno. And then you tie the car down with tie down straps like you'd use to hold it to a trailer and you're good to go. You can do uh, about 180 miles an hour while sitting still. It's uh, an incredible tuning tool uh, and it's really what put us on the map. We bought this dyno in 15 years ago. We bought it from Flying Miata out in Grand Junction, Colorado. And we were, um, we were ATS. We were Aaron, Todd, and Scott, just three guys. And we drove out with uh, Todd and Scott's dad's pickup and a car hauler and loaded this dynamic <laughs> dyno on there and drug it back home and managed to set it up in our, we were in Louisville at that time. We set it up in that location. And uh, we were the first MR2 shop to have a dyno. So we were the first ones that were able to show what our parts were actually doing. Uh, and then now as time's passed, it's, it's still very useful and it's great uh, because we've documented it. But, and so even though other people have gotten dynos, um, we had such a head start on developing parts that most of the time they use the dyno to just confirm what we told them instead of developing their own parts around us. So, told you so. Been great for business. <laughs> what is actually up on our dyno right now is a 1989 Toyota MR2. This is one of Scott's personal projects. What's in this car is a 2GR 3.5 liter Toyota V6, like out of a modern Camry. So this little MR2, which weighs around 2,400 pounds, has got, uh, I think Scott dynoed at 275 wheel horsepower over the weekend. So that's around 360 at the flywheel. So it's that's gonna be a blast. Awesome. Actually, Scott bought this car at Copart. It had been in a fire. So he rescued this car from being totaled. Slips right in. <laughs> I think there was only a little use of a hammer to make some clearance. Put some Vaseline on the side and just <laughs> plop it right in. Yeah, definitely wasn't. As far a fire, as installing huh? it, the order of operations is very important. Golly. Some parts don't fit uh, until the motor's in. You can't install them until the motor's in. So it's kind of the graveyard <laughs> slash holding area. So. You've got uh, a couple of used 3S motors that are in good shape, and then we've got a bunch of, uh, of scrap motors that we, we're actually gonna dispose of this week. And then up on this back shelf is the, the bane of the MR2 existence right now. Those are all damaged MR2 transmissions. All right, thanks for watching. We are ATS Racing, located at 2120 James Street in Denton, Texas.